If you hear kids screaming in the background, I can't do anything about it. I mean, we're under complete lockdown. It's been a crazy week. You probably hear people screaming around as well because it's... I can't complain about my neighbors, you know? Anyways, it's been a crazy week, guys. Actually, being under lockdown hasn't stopped the news from flowing. In fact, it all started with our AMD Ryzen 4000 series notebook coverage featuring the ROG Zephyrus G14. If you're interested in our full coverage, you can check it out right over here. Spoiler alert, it's really, really good. But I'm here to talk about some more products that will have an impact on the notebook market from Intel and Nvidia. Now, you know what's really interesting? Both these companies decided to time their announcements at the exact same day at the exact same time. I wonder why. Anyways, Intel's announcing some new notebook processors that are supposed to compete against uh, AMD's Ryzen H series lineup until they come out with a newer architecture, which I don't even know when that's gonna happen. Uh, now on the Nvidia side of things, uh, they're finally implementing RTX or they're announcing RTX Super Series GPUs for the gaming notebook market. I guess it was just a matter of time. So combine those things and you're getting this video and of course a confirmation of pretty much every online leak that you've seen in the last few months. So let's get right into it after a quick message from our sponsor, which by the way, isn't Intel or NVIDIA. The Razer Huntsman Tournament Edition has arrived. Its linear optical switches are rated at 100 million keystrokes and actuate at just one millimeter. That gives it a lightning quick feel with no risk of debounce delay. Let your fingertips appreciate the double shot PBT keycaps with their extra texture and enhanced durability so you can always dominate your game. The Razer Huntsman TE keyboard. This is gaming at a speed of light. Learn more in the links below. Okay, so about this combined launch, well, the main reason is that you'll be seeing a lot of these new notebooks with Intel's 10th Gen H series processors and RTX Super Graphics. But with AMD Ryzen mobile processors suddenly becoming ultra competitive in the notebook space and with Navi GPUs coming very soon, Intel and Nvidia sort of needed each other. <laughs> Actually, it's more about Intel needing NVIDIA in the gaming notebook market because there's no problem pairing an AMD Ryzen mobile processor and an RTX GPU. In fact, the RTX 2070 and the RTX 2080 are gonna be the highest end options in the higher end gaming notebook space uh, for the next year or so. So with that out of the way, what is Intel announcing? Well, uh, it's the new 10 Gen H series CPUs or artists formerly known as Comet Lake. Comet Lake, yep, Comet Lake, my friends. You see, I'm gonna keep this really quick because there's nothing really new here. It's just the usual story. 14 nanometer plus, 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 plus architecture, uh, you know, higher core frequencies and uh, increased memory speeds up to 20 and 33 megahertz and a few other bits. Starting off with the i9, Intel is launching the 10980HK, which basically updates the 9980HK to better compete with the Ryzen 9 4800H. It has eight cores and 16 threads, along with crazy high max turbo speeds up to 5.3 gigahertz. Base speeds hasn't changed though. Even though Intel has a TDP listed as 45 watts, this CPU can technically suck down over 65 watts if it's given enough cooling. On to the i7 series, folks, and it's more of the same, except for the i7-10875, which brings 16 threads into a lower price and a TDP bracket as well. For example, Razer will be using this for the refreshed Blade 15 base model, replacing the six core 12 thread 9750H. This is gonna be an important CPU since it competes with literally half of Ryzen's lineup, which uh, has four different processors offering 16 threads. It's pretty messed up that Intel's only offering 12 and 16 core parts in the i7 series, but uh, I think I've probably said enough about this confusing lineup, so let's just move on. The i5 series is the same as before, but with some big max turbo boosts. I just wanna make it clear that these maximum numbers will only be reached under the best possible conditions, so expect actual clock speeds in normal workloads to be much lower uh, when we see Comet Lake's true performance against Ryzen. So that wraps up Intel, now on to Nvidia. Right now, the GeForce lineup has a monopoly in the high-end gaming notebook space, and uh, Nvidia is making some moves to push things a little bit further with the new super refreshes. 
So there are new few GPUs as well as some cool interesting technologies as well. The RTX 2080 Super and RTX 2070 Super for notebooks will both have more cores but lower speeds than the non-super cards. Like usual, the boost clock will be very, very dependent on the notebook's cooling and power design, especially for the 2080 Super, which can suck down over 150 watts. That actually means an RTX 2080 Super could technically perform worse than an RTX 2080 if it throttles due to temperatures. Another interesting thing is that the RTX 2070 is still gonna stick around for now. I think Nvidia is still keeping this so that it can compete against the RX 5700M if it uh, ever becomes widely available. The rest of Nvidia's lineup is gonna look pretty much the same with the RTX 2060 and the GTX 1660 Ti. There is a GTX 1650 Ti here too, but it's only a rebrand of the current GTX 1650. It still uses a 1024 core version of the TU117 GPU, but it gets a bit more headroom to operate at consistently higher speeds. To be perfectly honest with you, I think this is gonna cause a ton of confusion in the thin and light notebook market. Supposedly the performance difference between the TI and the non-TI version is only about 10%, which isn't a lot. So just be aware of that uh, if you're willing to spend an extra money on a 1660 Ti. Uh, on a notebook. I actually think the most exciting thing Nvidia is announcing isn't the Super Series. In fact, it's the RTX 2060, since supposedly notebooks with it will be going for just a thousand dollars. That's really impressive, guys, when you consider the Helios 300 I reviewed last year uh, cost about twelve hundred dollars, but it came with a GTX 1660 Ti. I also want to get into the tech that Nvidia is announcing with these GPUs but there is a huge catch with two of them. Uh, you'll hear me talk about Dynamic Boost and Advanced Optimus, which can be game changers, but neither of them are added as default. You see, just like everything else on notebooks, these are complete options, which means it's completely up to the notebook manufacturer to add them. So that means if you're going out and buying a new laptop, there's no way of telling if these two features are enabled by default, which is just an absolute disaster. I don't even know. Ugh. Like why? Anyways, let's talk about dynamic boost that could be added to some RTX Max-Q gaming laptops. It identifies when the GPU itself becomes a bottleneck and shifts power in real time in order to increase performance. Up to 15 watts of overhead can be directed towards the graphics card. Now it can have a 5-7% to performance benefit and Nvidia says that it works with both AMD and Intel CPUs. And if you're a content creator like myself, there is some bad news. Unfortunately, Dynamic Boost is only set up to detect gaming workloads. Now, if you think you've heard something like this before, it's because you actually have. AMD announced something similar called Smart Shift, which increases performance of either the GPU or the CPU, whereas Nvidia's only focuses on graphics card. The last thing is less of a new tech, but rather something I've been asking for, and that's Advanced Optimus will finally allow you to run G-Sync with switchable graphics enabled. It also comes with a few other benefits, but that's a major one. So that about wraps this up, guys. Uh, I think 2020 is gonna be an interesting year for notebooks uh, now that AMD has some kick-ass products out there. Intel, on the other hand, they are in, they're in a very bad place right now. In fact, they could start losing market share in a big way. You see, here's the thing. Until they come up with a new architecture uh, that doesn't fail as hard as Ice Lake, Intel does know that they're gonna get their butts kicked. In fact, coming to think of it, it sort of feels like AMD brought a baseball bat to a fight while Intel just brought a wet, reused noodle. <laughs> right now, it's all about holding down the fort and squeezing every last ounce of performance from what they've got, sort of like what AMD did with Bulldozer. Now, with Nvidia on the other hand, they're trying to keep their lineup looking fresh as AMD ramps up production on the Navi GPUs for notebooks, but... Uh, yeah, the new supers, they look pretty exciting. They look pretty cool. They should offer more performance for gamers and creators. But I'm actually more interested in the RTX 2060s in $1,000 notebooks. That's something that I'm really excited about. Either way, uh, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this little explain series. Stay safe, stay healthy. A lot more content is coming on your way. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one.